What's going on, my good people? Mike Hidalgo here. Thank you for joining us on another FCP Euro DIY. Today, we're gonna be working on a 2008 W211 E63 AMG. Today, on the E63 behind me, we're gonna be covering how to replace your front wheel bearings. Now, something neat about these cars is that you can either buy the fully assembled Febby kit like we have in front of us, available on fcpro.com, or if you want to retain the hubs, you can just buy the tapered bearings and replace those. We'll show you both of them as we take the old units apart. Typically, these are going to last you anywhere between 100,000 miles or so. Now, they have been known to go longer, and they also have been known to fail prematurely. A couple of things to look out for is simply noise when you're driving. You'll hear a whirble coming from the front end or the rear end, depending on which bearing has gone bad. As they get worse, that noise will get progressively louder. An easy way to check for play is simply by jacking up the vehicle and clocking the wheels left and right, as well as up and down. We'll show you that when we throw the car up in the air. But before we get started on that, let's take a look at some of the tools we're gonna need for this DIY. And now for tools. For this job, we're gonna need a couple different size hammers. I have some adjustable pliers, which will come in handy when we're tightening that pinch nut for our bearing. We have a dial indicator tool, which we'll need to read run out on the bearing. Flathead screwdriver. We have two different torque wrenches, both a half inch drive and a three eighths drive. We have a quarter inch, three eighths and half inch drive ratchets. We have an impact gun for our wheels. We have some liquid moly ceramic paste. We have a caliper hook so we can hang our caliper off to the side while we work on the hub assembly. We have two 21 millimeter sockets, both half inch and three eighths drive. A 17 millimeter for our lug bolts. A five millimeter hex with a rounded head for our pinch bolt on the hub and a T30 for our set screws. Now we know what tools we're working with, let's go ahead and get started on this DIY. All right, before we get started on this brake DIY, something you always wanna check is the fluid level in your reservoir on the W211 that is located on the driver's side firewall. To get to it, we have a cover to remove. It's got two locking screws that you twist 90 degrees to unlock. Turn those counterclockwise to free them up. From there, you can lift up the panel, remove it if you'd like, just set it to the side. That's gonna give us access to our fluid reservoir. Now, the reason you wanna keep an eye on this is simply due to the fact that when you're doing a brake job and you're compressing the pistons back into the calipers, depending on if the fluid level has changed on your vehicle, the system may overpressurize itself and sometimes you'll cause a leak up here at the reservoir. So what you can do to avoid that is remove the cap, take some fluid out of the reservoir using a baster or a syringe or some sort of suction tool. Just leave it a little bit low, not low enough to get air into the system itself, but just low enough to where you can compress all the pistons that you're gonna be working with and not worry about overfilling and overspilling here. So for us, the vehicle is at a decent level. We have more than enough room to take up before we have to worry about anything, but we're gonna keep the cover off so we can keep an eye on it. With that being said, let's head over to the front and get started. So an easy way to check for wheel bearing play is simply by having the wheel up in the air. We're working on the lift today, so we have all four corners up. However, not important. You wanna grab your wheel on your west and east side, give it a wiggle back and forth. Same thing, north and south. This has play in both directions. Now that can be due to the bearing just being bad. This vehicle does have 140,000 miles and or the tie rod components being worn. So just keep that in mind whenever you're doing that. We're gonna go ahead and tackle the wheel bearing today. Down the road, you'll see us do some other suspension components related to the front end. All right, to get started, we're gonna start by removing our wheel. We have five 17 millimeter lug bolts that we're gonna to wanna to take off. So we'll grab our half inch impact, our 17 millimeter lug socket, and zap these off. All right. Now with that off, we have a better view of where we're gonna be working. So I'm gonna grab a trash bin, just something to catch all the debris that I'm gonna be dropping here because we're working on the shop today. And then we'll go ahead and get started. To get started, we're gonna start by making sure that we can break free our rotor set screw. That way when we come to remove the rotor, that doesn't hang us up. So I'm gonna use the caliper in place. I'm gonna take a flathead screwdriver and just stick it in one of the veins. And then I'm gonna grab my T30 on my quarter inch ratchet and break that free. 
One thing I like to do with these Northeast cars that we have here is set the bit in place and give it a couple taps with the hammer just to break free any uh, rust or anything that may be binding it up. Now we have our set screw off, we can work on freeing up our caliper so we can hang that off to the side and then work on removing our rotor. So let's go ahead and get started with that. And get our rotor off. All right, now that we have our rotor off and we have our brake off to this side, you may see this looks a little empty. We are filming a couple of videos at the same time, so stay tuned for those. But for now, let's continue on with this bearing. We're gonna start by removing this grease cap. You can use a hammer and a flathead screwdriver to get that off, which is what we're gonna do right now. All right, now that we have our dust shield off, we're gonna go ahead and work on freeing up our locking nut on the end here. You're gonna need an extended five millimeter hex to fit that in there. I'm gonna give it a couple taps just to make sure it's fully seated. Once that is loose, we should be able to just turn this back by hand. Go ahead and set this to the side. We're gonna need it once more. Use a tapered end of our bearing. Go ahead and set that to the side or throw it out. And then this should pull out forward. Beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and clean this area up and then we'll get ready to install our new bearing. We have our old grease off. We're gonna go ahead and just give it a light coating with some of the fresh Mercedes slime looking grease. Now we're all slimed up, I mean greased up. We can go ahead and slide our bearing in. You obviously wanna make sure that the old seal came off with the old bearing. Ours came off intact, which was great. And go ahead and feed this on. Beautiful. Now we can take our new bearing, press that into place. Excess grease in there is totally fine. While the nut isn't so much torqued down to place, I still want to clean up the threads a little bit. Now we can go ahead and feed our locking nut back in. You obviously want to make sure you clean the old grease off of that as well. All right, we have our bearing in place. We have our nut all cleaned up. We're going to go ahead and thread it on. All right, now we have our hub on and we have our pinching lock nut in place. Our next step is gonna to be to measure the runout of the bearing and make sure we have the proper adjustment. You want 0.01 to 0.02 millimeters of play, no more than that. So for that, we're gonna use that dial indicator which we showed you at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up quickly, show you where you wanna measure off from, and then we'll go from there. So for now, this is again, it's gonna be hand, hand loose if you want, you can bottom it out and then work your way back. Doesn't matter either way. So at this point we have our nut pretty bottomed out. You can see there's zero play in our bearing. So that's gonna be too tight. We're gonna burn it out. The car's not gonna be happy. We're gonna work with quarter turn increments. If you need to use some adjustable pliers or an adjustable wrench. I just need to break this free from where I tightened it. I'll give it about a quarter turn or so. Dial still at zero. So as you can see, we have our dial indicator set up. It's zeroed out. Right now we have our pinching nut tight pretty 
almost as tight as it can go by hand. You can see we barely have any play in there. It's going to be a little too tight. We loosen it up just a little bit. We have a little bit more. Another quarter turn. Another quarter turn. This gives us about one millimeter of play. That's going to be more than good enough for what we're going to want. So at this point, we're going to move dial indicator off. We'll grab our five millimeter hex and we'll lock down our pinch nut. So let's go ahead and get ready for that. With our pinch nut where we want it, we're going to take our five millimeter hex tool and lock that in place as best as we can. You can use some pliers to kind of hold it. I'm going to use my hand. If you're torquing this at home, you want to torque it to no more than 11 Newton meters. Beautiful. Now at this point, we can put our dust cap back on. Before we do so, we're going to add a little bit more grease to the interior of it. With the grease inside our cap, now we can go ahead and get that started on the hub. With our cap started, we're actually going to go ahead and take our old cap kind of situate it over a new one and work the new cap on using this as our spacer. That looks nice and even all the way around. All right, now that we have our dust cap back on, we can work on wrapping up the rest of this hub bearing replacement. So for that, we're gonna prep our hub with some liquid Molly ceramic paste slap our rotor back on, our caliper, and then wrap up this DIY. We're gonna go ahead and apply a liquid Molly ceramic paste. The idea is to put this where the rotor sits on our hub. That way next time someone does brakes, they don't have to go as ham with the hammer as we did today. Any excess after we put the rotor on, we can wipe off. So now I'm just spreading what I put on. The main part, I'm not adding more material. All right, now that our wheel hub assembly is ready to go with some liquid molly ceramic paste, let's go ahead and grab our rotor, put that back on and go from there. Before I put that set screw in, I like to add a little bit of paste to where it sits, just because I have had to drill out too many set screws in the past to want to deal with that again. You want to go ahead and install your set screw using your T30. We're going to go ahead and torque those down to eight newton meters. Now that we have that situated, we can go ahead and reinstall our brake caliper. All right, baby. Now we're going to go ahead and take our caliper off the carrier hook and we'll get our 221 millimeters started by hand. All right, now that they're both started by hand, I'm going to use a 21 on my 3 8 drive ratchet just so I can quickly snug them up. And now we're going to grab our 21 millimeter socket, our half inch socket on our torque wrench. I'm ready to torque these down to 180 newton meters. All right, with our caliper back on, now we can go ahead and get our wheel back on and wrap up this wheel bearing DIY. All right. And we'll start our five 17 millimeter lugs by hand. We'll snug them up with the impact and then we'll lower the car down and torque them down. All right, with those snugged up, let's go ahead and get the car on the ground and then we'll torque the lug bolts down. All right, with our 17 on our torque wrench, we're gonna go ahead and torque our five lug bolts down to 135 Newton meters. Make sure you torque them down in a cross pattern. Boom, baby. And there you have it, my good people, another DIY in the books. Overall, a pretty straightforward job doing the hubs on the W211. Gets a little technical with the dial indicator, but pretty straightforward. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments on what we did today, or you wanna see something specific on the W211, leave them in the comment box below. And if you like this DIY and you wanna see more like them, please consider subscribing, we make new ones all the time. As always, thank you for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.